Good evening, church. Good evening, uh, brethren, uh, friends, uh, even uh, our Facebook viewers. Uh, good evening. <clears throat> I am so glad again. I've given, I have been given uh, opportunity to stand again here in your front and uh, sharing with you the word, the precious word of God, that really each and every one of us needs to hear, know, and understand. Actually, the topic for tonight is uh, the seven things that each and every one of us needs to understand. It means the seven questions of vital importance. There are seven uh, questions that every Christian should face. Questions of such vital importance that to ignore those questions is to imperil or putting in danger or in, or in risk one's spiritual life. I uh, told the prophet this morning uh, you cannot hear the message tonight. <laughs> I'm just joking to him. Uh, you lose one half of your life. <laughs> and he said, no, no, no. I still uh, can be able to, to listen through the Facebook. Okay. <laughs> okay. So number one is uh, we are committing, uh, are we, sorry, are we committing any known sin? That is question number one. Are we committing any known sin? The book of Psalms, chapter 66, 18, it says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That is very clear. Actually, he will not even listen or pay attention to what we're saying. Our prayers will not be answered while we are harboring or hiding sin in our heart. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 2, it says, Your iniquity have separated between you and your God. And not only that, it goes on to say, And your sins have hid uh, his face from you that he will not hear and uh, he will not listen. Sin separates. Sin hides God's face. Listen church, it is very important. Our prayers will only go on the ceiling of our house. It won't go up to God's throne of grace. If there is a sin that is harboring in our hearts. And aside from that, there's, uh, there can be no communion. What do I mean by this? <clears throat> it means no fellowship. Aside from the communion that we are doing here in the church, the Lord's Supper, there is also a hindrance because it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 29 to, I mean 27, 29, it says, Wherefore, whoever shall eat the bread and drink this, the cup of the Lord unworthily. unworthily. What, the, what do we mean by this? It means if we are harboring any sin in our hearts, it means we are partaking the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. That is very clear. If we are doing that, then we are guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. In verse 28 it says, But let man examine himself, and so let him, be, and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So what do you mean by this? Examine himself. It means on that on that time that we have that uh, uh, communion or Lord's Supper, if there is 
anything in your heart that is against your brother or sister, or if you, if you offended somebody or somebody offended you, so you need to go well with him or her first before partaking on the Lord's Supper. That is very clear also. So for that, for he that eateth or drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. See? So uh, uh, for this cause, on the verse 30, many are weak and sickly among you, and many even sleep. What do you mean by sleep? Can uh, this uh, uh, wine and uh, juice and the bread that we're uh, partaking will cause us to sleep? <laughs> it doesn't mean like that. It means uh, you will go, you will die, actually. That is the worst thing that will happen. If we are partaking in the Lord's Supper that is unworthily, meaning we have, uh, 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 we have seen that is harboring in our hearts. So no fellowship with God when there is sin. Let every one of you, uh, let, let everyone who call upon the name of the Lord of, uh, Christ must depart from iniquity. That is 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 41. That, that is God's command. We must forsake or be separate from all known sin. Amen? Maybe you forgot uh, what we had agreed before. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us turn from everything we know that is wrong. Everything that grieves the Holy Spirit. Let us not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let us put it out and abstain from it, from those sin. And we will never make any progress in Christian life until we break with sin. The only, listen to this, the only real sorrow that can ever come into a life of a Christian is the torture and anguish of the heart that harbors sin. See? Therefore, let us break it. Break it at all costs or we will never know the peace of God that passes all understanding. Church, Jesus can snap every rope uh, and break every chain. He can set us free. Not only He is the mighty to save, He is also able to keep us from falling. Amen? And it pays to be an overcomer. Number two, we are living, I mean, are we living in obedience to God's will? I will repeat. Are we living in obedience to God's will? That's, that's number two. Let us shield ourselves to God. Romans 6.13, the question is, have we surrendered all? Some of us knows the song, Have thine own way, Lord. You see? Who's, who knows that song? Have thine own way, Lord. Okay? Amen, amen, amen. See? So, that song implying or, or, or saying that, uh, uh, um, that, that, we, that God will be the one to be followed in our life. God's way, not our way. You see? That's why, have your own way, Lord. Not mine, but yours. But do we really mean it? Do we really mean that song, Have Your Own Way, Lord? And also the song, I will go where you want me to go. Or we still want our own way. Or do we put ourselves first instead of Christ? Is He or the Lord master of our life? Is He? Is the Lord is the master of our life? Or is he, I mean, or we are the master. Or if God, I mean, is God is the one driving and sitting on the driver's seat of our life? 
or we? Because if we are the one driving our life, there might be some way, some way around that we're going to have an accident. Amen? And not unless if God will be the one to sit on the driver's seat of our life and He will be the one to direct us by driving the driver's seat in our life. Amen? So the, uh, there is a story. You know, I find to always telling stories. <laughs> There's a story of a group of young people who went to a remote village somewhere in India to study in a Bible school. It was a very small village uh, uh, with a few uh, residents. And uh, they were told to go to a small building to check their own respective rooms. So like a, like a dormitory, see? You can picture in your, in your mind. Then, uh, one day, this young Indian boy happened to, happened to came late to register for his room. Then, when he came to inquire to the person in charge, that person told this young Indian boy that all rooms were already occupied. Oh, sorry. Then, one old guy happened to be one of the cleaner of the building, told the young boy, there is no available room except for that one room that is separated among those rooms. There's one room, small room separated. And I don't think you can be able to survive on that room because all the student doesn't want to stay on that room. Then the young boy replied, what seems to be the problem of that room? Then the cleaner told him, well, that abandoned room doesn't have light, no water, toilet is not working, no bed, windows are broken, rats and cockroaches are all over, and so on and so forth. You name it. <laughs> then the boy looks intently in the eyes of the old man and say, sir, Give me that room that nobody wants. See? You can, you, can, you, can, you can see how the heart of that young Indian boy is so much in serving God. Like, like this. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care if there is no bed, I don't care if the windows are broken, I don't care if there is no light, I don't care if there is no water, I don't care if there is no nothing. I came here not for myself, but for the Lord. That's why, give me the room that nobody wants. You know, in our service to, our, to, to God, in our daily life, sometimes when we experience small problem, then we can be able, to, we can always uh, lose our, you know, our faith. Like, I don't feel good to attend today's service, then I, I would rather stay at home or I feel something like this or I don't have any clean clothes or that, I don't have this tank. Uh, my car is broken and well, well, so there's a lot of, you know, problem, I mean, reasons. Unlike this young Indian boy, I don't care. What I do care is that I'm here to study the word of God. No matter, there is nothing. After, then after hearing what the young boy said, his, the old guy tears fell down from his eyes. He can't control the tears falling down on his eyes. Uh, and uh, he hugged the young boy tightly while the in charge watching in tears. Give me that room that nobody wants. 
or willing to follow and serve the Lord even to that extent, church? Are, are we willing? There's a song that entitles Trust and Obey. Who knows that song again? <laughs> Trust and Obey. It's, very, it's a nice song. Apostle Paul said in Hebrews 11.25, choosing, Hebrews 11.25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. You see? So he choosing rather to suffer affliction. If we want to be used by God, we must be obedient. We must be prepared to go where God wants us to go. It must be His way instead of our own, His choice rather than ours. When we really yield to Him, His plan become ours and we delight to do His will. Okay, question number three. Are we spending time each day in prayer? Are we spending time each day in prayer? How many times we pray in a day? Ten times? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I don't go to the point of nothing, eh? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> you know what? We need to pray always. Book of Thessalonians says, pray without ceasing. What does it mean? We will not stop praying? No, it doesn't mean like that. We, it means that we always need to pray because a prayerful Christian is a powerful Christian. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. That's what we need to always pray so that we have become powerful Christians. One can be victorious apart. One, no one can be victorious apart from prayer. No one can be successful in Christian life unless he prays. I really appreciate the prayer of Pastor Kobus and uh, uh, Sister Sanet that, ooh, while they are praying, I feel it like I'm floating. Powerful, powerful prayer. Hallelujah. And that knockout punch. Yo! <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, if we neglect the prayer, we are weak. It is only those who wait upon the Lord will be able to renew our strength. Waiting means it can also be praying. It can also be praying. It means... Uh, uh, waiting through praying and doing the work for the Lord's kingdom while waiting for His Son coming, soon coming of Jesus. Unless we have been living or staying in an atmosphere of prayer, we are open to the attack of the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. You know that uh, verse, Ephesians chapter 6. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world. Okay? So those, we, we, we need to be always uh, ready. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Okay? The breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, our feet shod with the preparations of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, Okay? Sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And above all, yeah, taking that shield of faith. And take the helmet of salvation. And the lastly is praying. Always with prayer and supplication for all saints. With all perseverance. Hallelujah. There is a compelling need to, uh, to pray. Compelling need. Whether we like it or not, we need to pray for us. To survive. So it's very clear that we need to always have a constant communication with Christ. Because without 
Christ, we are nothing. I will prove you that. I will prove you that now, without Christ, we are nothing. The word Christian, take out the word Christ, what are the three letters left? I, A, N. It means I am nothing. You see? Christian, take out Christ, I, A, N. I am nothing. So I prove it. I really did prove it. Right? You see? Word Christian, take out Christ. We are nothing. Nothing. That's why without Christ, we are nothing. Nothing we can do in our life without Christ. Jesus prayed. He spent the whole night in prayer. Paul prayed. The early church prayed. And all those who have been used of God have been men and women of prayer. So let me ask you a question. Do we always pray? I heard only two. <laughs> Do we always pray? I think we already have our dinner. <laughs> Do we always pray? Uh, that's better. Do we keep meeting with God in prayer? Do we have an appointment with Him day by day? Before we sleep, pray. When we got up on the bed, before getting up on our bedside, pray. Before having our breakfast, pray. Before going out of our door, pray. During our working time, in our working place, pray. Before leaving our workplace, pray. We need to do that. We need to always pray. Question number four. Are we diligent students of God's word? Are we diligent students of God's word? In 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show thyself a proof unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly, Dividing the word of truth. To neglect the word of God is to minimizing ourselves off from hearing his voice. For one way God is speaking to us is through his word. If you want us, if you want us that if you want God to speak to us, what what are the things that we need to do first? is to read his word. It's to read his word. If we are not giving time to read and study our Bible, we are without guidance. Many have gone astray simply because they have ignored the word of God. I remember when I'm still elementary, that was many, many, many years ago, every time we go to, to our church, I always having my Bible with me. Even when I grew up and have my own, uh, when I'm working, I remember I'm operating the late machine in the Philippines, in my country, and I'm putting my big Bible on the bed of that machine and reading it while I am working on the machine. I'm trying to memorize the verses. Then I can see that on the side of my eyes, my co-workers are laughing on this side, my other co-workers are laughing on this side. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> what I do care is I need to read the Word of God, even to the point of memorizing the verses. And it pays until now. Many have gone astray. They lost their, their, their future. They lost 
a lot of things because they are not actually being guided by the Word of God. The Word is something that is impeccable, flawless, faultless, pure sustenance for our spiritual nourishment. If we really want to know Him, we will want to study it and the more we read it, the more interesting it will become. Amen? Have you, have you experienced that? The more we read the Bible, they said, I don't know, if it's true, the wine, the more it's becoming older, the more it's becoming good taste. I'm not a drinker, but I just heard that one. <laughs> so, it is also can be applied, I mean, it also been uh, happening where the more we are always, you know what? Many people will tell me, uh, you know what, I already read from Genesis to Revelation, so I, I, I know already, so no need for me to go back again and then again and again and again and read again and read again. But the thing is, each and every time you repeat reading the Word of God, there, are, there is something that God is showing us like insights. Even though we already know that verse very, very well. But when you still read it again, there is, God is still showing us some like uh, uh, insights that we haven't known yet before. You see? That's why that is the wonder of God's word. That is the mystery behind why we are always need to read and read and read and read the Word of God. <clears throat> you know the story of Dr. Van Impe? <clears throat> Dr. Van Impe is called the walking Bible because the whole Bible is in his mind. He memorized from Genesis until Revelation. Even all those punctuation mark and uh, 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 period is already in his head. Then one day, this young little child, a girl, a girl, he said, uh, Doctor, uh, I want to be like you because you know the Bible very well. You can, you can recite it. From Genesis to Revelation, you can recite. So I want to be like you. The young child said. Then, you know, Dr. Banipe said, all right. Because he's, he know, he's known by his uh, big library, even close you, you, off the light. He's got thousands of volumes inside his library. Off the light. And then tell him to get that particular book. He can take it without the light. Okay, now he, said, he, he told the child, okay, there are three things that you need to do in order for you to become like me. Okay, what is that three things? All right, first is to read the Word of God. Second, read the Word of God. Third, read the Word of God. Means read, read, and read. That is his answer to that, to that uh, child. If we really want to know him, he will, we will want to study it. And the more we read it, the more interesting it will become. And later on, it will become our lifestyle. I remember when I, you know, when I first converted in the year 1975, I was 15 years old then. When I first time to read, uh, t first time to read my Bible until now, I'm still pouring over its pages, over and over again, and it's just like new to me, as if as if it was the first time I read it. <laughs> Is the Word of God a living book to us? Is a living book to you? Are we feeding on it on a daily basis? 
are we are we hungry of his word god compares his word to a milk and meat if we need to be strong we must read it constantly not just like well i already read yesterday then uh, it's my off today now my schedule is uh, <laughs> you're going to <laughs> uh, maybe tomorrow okay no not like that it must be like how many times we eat every day breakfast uh, uh, noon time dinner night time so three times we we buy feeding our physical body same is true with our spiritual life we have to feed our spirit three times a day by the word of god but uh brother romi uh i'm working uh you know i'm so busy and uh, well if that's so then at least read once a day at least our spirit still struggling to because only eating one try to eat only once a day what what, what do you feel try to eat once a day like no no breakfast only noon time no dinner night time just the following you eat again the following day no breakfast again what do we feel weak same is true with our spirit if we feed our spirit only once a day then our spirit is weak it is the spirit that supersedes the body please always remember that if our spirit is strong our body is strong it will follow amen but if our spirit is weak our body is weak because the spirit supersedes the body i'll tell you another story about the member who wants to borrow money to his pastor there is a member of a certain church wants to borrow money to his pastor one day that that member said pastor please can you borrow me thousand bucks i really need to pay somebody it's very 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 urgent please i will pay you next week then uh, the pastor okay let me think about it the pastor said like that then when the service finished that guy went home without the money then the following sunday he attended again and then he approached his pastor and then that 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 that, that member said pastor you remember i'm i'm borrowing money to you last sunday but uh, you didn't borrow me the pastor said what how come well pastor you did not give me any money no 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 did you read your bible last night i mean on that night when you go home did you read your bible no that's it that's why you did not get the money why because i inserted the money on your bible the thousand bucks i inserted on your bible because i'm looking at you you cannot uh, i cannot see you so i saw your bible on your seat so i inserted the money there on your bible and then i told that somebody to give it to you your bible now if you read your bible on that night you, you should have been seen the money <laughs> see that's the problem of not of us not reading our bible <laughs> you see <laughs> that is the problem <laughs> So we always need eh, to read our Bible. But don't borrow money to me. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Question number five. Are we confessing Christ publicly? Are we confessing Christ publicly? During my early years of my Christian experience, I was on fire for souls i enjoyed getting 
out of the street corner with a company of God's people and giving my testimony and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, uh, gave me a great pleasure in my life. I remember the time when I joined the evangelical group of Campus Crusade for Christ. Have you known that? Have you heard about that? Campus Crusade for Christ, Evangelistic Crusade. They called it, I Found It Campaign. That was in 1976 when I joined. I'm 16 years old then. I just newly saved. I got the opportunity of working in different kinds of missions and uh, appointing souls to Christ. Like one-on-one -on -one evangelism, I've been to that. Street evangelism, I've been to that. Evangelism explosion, I've been to that. Then lately, the much, much bigger evangelis evangelism uh, 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 activities. I was being driven by the fact that God put the burden in my heart about the condition of the unsaved. But what about today? Are we lost? I mean, have we lost our first love? Do you know exactly what I'm, what I'm referring here? Okay. Have we become cold and indifferent? Does the fire of God no longer burn in our heart? Can we attend church and go through religious performance and gatherings without any burden concerning the lost? If we go out of that street there, you can see people, all, a lot of people walking. You know what? It's hard to admit, but it seems that they are, what do you call that, living dead? Huh? Zombies? Why? Well, it's, it's hard to, to, to say like that. But technically, it's true. They are walk, walking. They are happily, you know, walking and, 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 and doing those kind of things in their life. I mean, in their own self, they are outside the road. But without Christ in their life, they are dead while they are living. Dead spiritually. They are living in, 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 in you know, physically, but inside they are dead spiritually. That's why sometimes I term them zombies. You see? We need to have that compassion to save the lost. In, in, even in my working place, when, when people, uh, I'm, I'm in charge of the warehouse, when, when, when the workers are coming to me and asking for the parts and materials, and now uh, I see, I mean, I, I, I really want them to share the word of God, you see? And uh, most of them I already shared, and, most of, and some of them received the Lord during, on, on my uh, workplace. And uh, on the first, very tough, because they are you know, like, they believe on the ancestral worship. You see? They said, oh, our ancestor is the one taking care of us. Our ancestor, you know, uh, uh, we, when we have a sickness or whatever problem in our life, we are calling our ancestors. See? I told them, is your ancestor alive until now? No, they're dead. So why are you putting your trust, your faith on the dead people? I know they are your ancestors, but they are dead. How can they help you? Like, how can you be, how can you be fear of somebody that is already dead? You must fear those who are alive, because those who are alive can kill you. But those dead, they cannot kill you anymore. Or otherwise, they cannot help you. You can ask the help of those who are alive, not those who are dead. But uh, keep on, uh, uh, like... Uh, reasoning out to me but later on the word of God prevails then they accept the Lord as their Lord and Savior in their life so even in our workplace let us share the word of God let us save the lost at any cost save the lost I've been driven by the fact that God put the burden in my heart about the condition of the unsaved but what about today see 
Can we attend church and go through religious performance and gatherings without any burden of concerning the lost? So we have to rescue those who are perishing. There is a song, Rescue the Perishing. It's a very nice song. Do we really do something to rescue the perishing? Have, have we any heart interest in the salvation of lost men and women? Remember the, the, the war going on in Russia and Ukraine? Can you see those people, uh, uh, a private or uh, private people that, that is dying? You see, babies. I remember one rocket hit the hospital and there is a pregnant lady inside the hospital that died. Babies dying because of that impact of that uh, explosion. Have we ever think about their souls? You see? That's why I urge the church, when you pray, pray also to those people there. Pray for them. Really, we, they need our prayers. They really need our prayers. God has commanded us to bear witness to others. So we need to witness God. In John chapter 15, verse 16, it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruits. And it doesn't stop there. And, and, and God and Jesus goes on to say, And that your fruits should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Amen. So that is God's calling to us that we have to share the word of God. We can distribute gospel tracts. Surely we can write soul winning letters to our friends, relatives, neighbors. At least we can uh, uh, share the word of God to our workmates, classmates, office mates, soul mates, or even to the inmates. <laughs> you know the inmates? We need to have a jail ministry. All right? Let, let us remember a heart. Listen to this, church. A heart without Christ is a mission field. And a heart with Christ is a missionary. I will repeat. A heart without Christ is a mission field. But a heart with Christ is a missionary. We, all of us, almost all of us, or maybe all of us, is a heart with Christ. So we are all missionary. Let us mission. Our mission field is outside those who doesn't have any Christ in their heart. Amen. So let us preach. Take out the P, reach. Take out the R, each soul. Preach, reach, each soul. Amen. Amen. Question number, I mean, yeah, question number six, are we giving liberally as God prospers us? Are we giving liberally as God prospers us? Give and it shall be given to you, Luke 6.36, as we give, God gives, this is one of God's eternal laws. Once we give, we can expect. Amen? Once we give, we can expect. 101%. Once you throw a seed on the ground, what can you expect? It will grow. Amen? That growing is one of God's laws. Eternal laws. You don't have, we don't have any participation in, in the seed growing. We, we don't have any participation to that. You see, once we sow the seed, it will grow by itself because God put the laws, the eternal law to those seeds. Amen? This is one of God's eternal laws. Once we give, we can expect 101%. And God will bless us. We can't outgive God when it comes to giving. We cannot outgive God. We can't. We can't. But if we are not faithful with small things, then how can, we be, how can he expect us to be faithful in big things? 
Well, Pastor, um, I'm, I'm, my tithe is big now. Before, my salary is small, my tithe is like, let's say, 100 rand. Ah, it's very easy. Pack, 100. <laughs> now, the Lord bless you. Your, your, your position went up, promotion, salary went up, becoming big. This time, your tithe is not only 100, but let's say 1,000 rand. Pastor, 1,000 rand is very hard, to, <laughs> very hard to give. Imagine 1,000 rand. See? But how about your life where did you buy your right where did you bought your your life who gave your life who gave your strength who gave your brain to think who gave your everything in your life who it's not your own but it's god amen so everything comes from him we have like a small discussion during our uh, meeting last uh, uh, for, for the board meeting I said for me I will not say I gave my tithe I would rather say I returned my tithes to God because when we return when, when we give our tithes to God listen church when we give our tithes to God we are not actually giving yet we are not actually giving yet. So when we give our tithes, let, don't tell, don't tell to, uh, that, oh, well, well, I already gave my tithe. No, 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 no. You are not yet giving your tithe. You are just returning what is for God. What, what, he, what, what is for Him. That's why in Malachi 3.10, it, the first word there is bring. It doesn't say give. Because we cannot give something that is not belong to us. Amen? Amen? Let's give a clap offering unto the Lord. <laughs> I will repeat. We cannot give something that is not belong to us. No, we can't. We can only bring. We can only. That's why God uses the word bring and not give. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse where there be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing that there will be no room enough for us to receive. You see? So bring, not give. So when we say, well, Lord, I will not use the gift because I haven't given yet. I will just return what is for you. Now, how can we give? Okay, after bringing our tithes to God, then over and above our tithes in which we have to give our offering, that's the time that we are starting to give when we give our offering. Amen. I hope I shed a light <laughs> in, on that uh, topic. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, seldom we will find one who is faithfully given to God's work. Who, who, okay, before I continue this, I still want to share something to you about giving. When, that, when our salary landed on our accounts most of us our cell phone is ringing ding 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 and it shows your money your salary went in right amen now as soon as the money went to your account you need to put that application of cell phone banking that once the money came, automatically give or send to the 
to, to CDC uh, uh, account number. Automatically, on that moment, send it quickly. Why, Pastor? Why, why are you telling us those things? Why? Because the first, uh, uh, okay, this is one God's law. The first portion is the redemptive portion. Listen, listen very carefully. The first portion is the redemptive portion. And the last portion is the cursed portion. Okay, I will explain. When, when, when the money goes to your account, then you did not send it uh, 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 quickly, then um, the, the account deducted to our salary, you know, the debit orders, clothing, and everything that is deducting, insurance, and what, 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 medical aid, and what, 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 okay? Then our salary already been taken out, I mean, uh, some amount. And then later on, after a few days, we decided, well, uh, now I will send my tithes. I will bring, I will send my tithes to the to CGC. Do you think, even though you send 10%, yes? Because if it's not 10%, it's not tithes. All right? So later on, we decided to send our tithes after so many deductions by the uh, uh, um, accounts, debit orders. And then we send our tithes later on. That is not blessed. I'm telling you, that is not blessed. That is cursed. Firstly, because God gave first His only begotten Son. God, there is a law on, on the book of Exodus that you have to give the first of our first fruits. First fruits is the salary. First of the salary. First. Not on the middle, not on the last, but the first portion of our salary we have to give it to the Lord. Amen? Because if we give the, 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 the middle portion of our salary or the last portion, even though it's 10%, it is not blessed. Because we did not put God first, but instead we give first to the insurance, we give first to the uh, uh, clothing uh, 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 allowance or I mean clothing thingy okay so first as soon as possible when our money comes let's send it to the church quickly amen amen, amen. <laughs> and we need to give cheerfully why why we need to give cheerfully because God loves a cheerful giver that's correct I'm on my last question now. <clears throat> number seven. Question number seven. Are we doing something definite for the Lord Jesus? Are we doing something definite for the Lord Jesus? If we want to be used by God, we must find a place and a people where we can give our testimony. Like here in this church. A soul winning New Testament church must become our home. We are saved to serve, and unless we are doing something for the Lord, we are not fulfilling the vision He has for us. Again, I will repeat, we are saved to serve. We must not only, an, have, an, we must not only have an eye service, or, a, or like listening service. Instead, we must be a mouth and feet service. We may not have many talents, but at least we can do something. These are those who wait to be asked. They attend the church, enjoy the service, but never think of taking part in any of our church activities. See? 
They have the idea that the pastor will seek them and approach them if he needs them and tell them what to do. If they are really saved, it will come out naturally. The sense of accountability, they will find out by themselves where they can be used by God. First, uh, Paul's first cry after he was being converted on the way to Damascus, what is Paul's first cry when he was first uh, converted? He said, Lord, what do you want me to do? That is Paul's first uh, cry. And that ought to be the cry of every newborn soul, every newborn believer. Otherwise, it's a questionable. There's a big question mark because we are saved to serve. In fact, Jesus said in John 15, 16 that uh, uh, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. God chosen us. All of us. But pastor, I mean, I, I, I think I, I, I have not chosen by God. No, you are chosen by God. Instead of waiting for our pastor or our prophet or, or someone to tell us that what to do, they need to go direct to God and get their instruction in prayer. Let us, let us direct go to God and ask for the instruction what God wants us to do in prayer. It may be that God wants us to teach in Sunday school class. Others may sing in the choir or in the church band or if we can uh, play instrument. Some may be called to usher. Others will help to assist in the young people. Actually need young people's, uh, uh, young people to, 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 to build the young, I, I, I need those, those guys. One thing is certain, we will never be at rest. We should always have that sense of awareness. Every moment, every second that passes on to always serve in the kingdom of God in any way possible. In any way possible. In short, let us get out in our comfort zone knowing that any time Jesus is coming. That is in Matthew 24, 44. Therefore, be also ready in such an hour as you think that the Son of Man comes, says there. Jesus can come tonight. Amen? I will repeat. Jesus can come tonight. Perhaps while I am preaching now or later when we are already at home or tomorrow or the following day or next week or next month or next year. We doesn't know. My point here is that uh, this is statement of proof that no one knows when Jesus shall come. No one knows. Even the angels, even the son, but only the father knows when will be the time that Jesus will come. If we, if we think about those, uh, th that thing, the center of our concern must be that we need to have that sense of urgency. Sense of urgency. Like, let, 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 us, let us put it in our heart, in our mind, that Jesus can come any moment, any single moment, Jesus will come. What if Jesus comes and we are not ready? What, 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 what are the things that will going to happen to us? We will stay. You see that uh, rapture of the church? Have you heard about that? You see? Anytime rapture will take place. What is rapture, by the way? Rapture is a simultaneous snatching of all the genuine believer throughout the world. That is rapture. If you uh, 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 watch the, the Left Behind series, have you, have you watched that uh, series, Left Behind? So what happened? Airplane is crashing down because the pilot so happened to be a Christian and the pilot is gone, what will happen to the plane? And uh, every day there are thousands and thousands of flight that is flying on our atmosphere. Thousands, not hundreds, thousands of flights. 
But what about among the thousand pilots? Ten percent of them are Christian. For example, what is ten percent of a thousand? Simple math, <laughs> hundred. Okay, hundred planes going down. Ooh, terrible. Hundred planes crashing down all throughout the world. So it means chaos and disorder. Vehicles are millions that is flying, I mean, you know, going to the road. Millions and millions of vehicles. Only 10% is Christians. Is also millions. <laughs> you can say it. You see? And all bumping or crashing head to head. Bumper to bumper. So it's a chaos and disorder. So the thing is, my point is that since we doesn't know when Jesus Christ will come, then we need to have that sense of urgency that we should always be ready in any single moment, right? Amen? How can we be ready? Pastor, how can, we, how can I be ready? Financially, I'm ready. I've got lots of money in the bank. Physically, I'm ready. I'm, I'm strong. I'm healthy. It's no problem. What else? What kind of readiness do you want me to do? Is that, is, is that the way how, to, how, how Christians be ready? Christians need to be ready spiritually. Amen? And how can, be, how can we be ready spiritually? Let us always read the word of God. Joshua 1 9, this book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, that may have uh, 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 success and shall have our way prosperous. Amen? That is Joshua 1 9. So we need to always read the word of God daily. Daily? No. Day and night, it says so. Okay, so read the word of God for us to be ready. What else? Pray. We need to always pray. Then what else? What else? We need to have a fellowship. Hebrews 10.25 Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much as you see the day approaching. That is Hebrews 10.25. I'm just quoting all of those. You see? So what is the day approaching? That is when Christ shall come. Not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together like what we are doing now. So in those three ways, reading the Word of God, praying, and uh, not to forsake this kind of assembling, is one, is, is the way on how to always be ready spiritually. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some of them are, Amen, 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 Amen. <laughs> amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> See? So we need to always be ready. Every moment. Any moment. Alright. I'm always, I mean, I almost finished now. Okay. <clears throat> if we are truly born again. Did you hear me? If we are truly born again. Not born again. Not like that. Or not burn again. No. No. I will repeat, not born again or not burn again. But if we're really born again, that is the right <laughs> pronunciation, that is the right word. Okay? If we're truly born again, we certainly do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And so I ask again, are we working every now and then for Christ? Are we really working for Christ? Are we active? Is our time devoted for, for God? 
or we still on the reserve list waiting for call. There are two kinds of volunteers, remember. The active and the inactive volunteer. Listen, uh, before I end up my uh, uh, preaching. So, the two kinds, active and inactive. Both are volunteers. Remember, both are volunteers. Active and inactive. Okay. The inactive says, Lord, here I am. That is the inactive, inactive volunteer. And the active volunteer says, Lord, send me. That is the active volunteer. The inactive, Lord, here I am. That is the inactive. But the active volunteer says, Lord, send me. See? Where are we there? Where are we? Where are we? Are we on the inactive volunteer or are we in the active volunteer? Lord, send me. Send me now. Don't wait for tomorrow or no, no, I want now, 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 now. Send me now. Okay? That is the active volunteer. So, if we, uh, so then if we say that we are in the active volunteer, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So let us study, study the word of God so that we will be approved unto him. Then God will give us a full reward and say, well, well done my good and faithful servant. Amen. It is very, very nice to hear that God will tell us, Come, my faith, uh, good and faithful servant. Enter in into the glory of God. Mm. Hallelujah. So those seven vital questions need to always ring not only in our ear, but also in our heart. Next time, if I will give again, if uh, the church will give me another chance to speak, I will share with you a much clearer and deeper insight when it, com when it comes to be a servant of God. This might be a very strong stuff, but we need to be like a grown up because if a small child eat a meat it will going to have a problem in the digestive system but I believe that all of us are grown enough to receive the much deeper and much uh, harder meat of the word of God Amen Hallelujah. Pray. Let's give a clap of praying unto the Lord. Okay. Let's call uh, Pastor Kervis.